Hi, this is Tina Horwood. You are going to be watching the online prosperity show. And tonight we're going to be talking about shifting our mindset from being skinny to being strong. Build your business, create a health and live a lifestyle of longevity. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the facilitator of change herself. Tina, how are you doing, my love? I am doing fantastic, Prosper. Thank you so much for having me on your fantastic show tonight. Great stuff. Right. Now, Tina Hardwood is a speaker. She's a facilitator of change, like I just said, and a personal trainer. She's also a mom of two who is on a mission to actually help busy women to create a healthy lifestyle for themselves and their families. And she's also self-confessed lover of weight training. And Tina actually helps women to shift their focus from being skinny to being strong. Now, that's a very powerful why that you've got there because the media has had all the women thinking that if you're not skinny, you are not worth living. Now, how did you come about to have such a determination, um, you know, to help women have a change of perceptive of who they actually are there, Tina? Oh, gosh, Prosper, it started, I guess it comes from my own journey through um, years and years of dieting and trying and striving to be skinny, trying to fit in, to feel like I was accepted because of the way I looked. Um, and I guess it really, my life changed in 2012 when we moved here to Melbourne. Um, and I decided that it was a fresh start. I didn't know anybody. I was tired of dieting um, and I was about, I was going to change my life. So I started going to the gym. I actually had a goal to uh, be part of a natural bodybuilding contest. I'd seen a, an article in a magazine and thought, wow, she looks normal. So let's try this. So I focused for 18 months on getting this perfect body um, to look a certain way to be judged on stage in front of people. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of pressure on yourself to look a certain way, to eat a certain way, to be a certain way, to be judged. Now, for me, the end result wasn't about winning that particular competition, but it was about overcoming my um, self-doubt, my self-hate of my body, to really push myself to the limits of what I felt I could achieve and knew that I could achieve. And I learned a lot about myself and about my habits and about my emotional eating and why I was emotionally eating and where all that had come from throughout that whole journey. So whilst um, in hindsight, it was a very unhealthy process physically, but um, it really showed me a lot about who I was and what I really wanted to feel like in my own self. So I was so proud of my results because I looked amazing, I have to say, placed equal sixth in this competition. But it was after this competition when life went back to normal that I had this massive rebound and all the weight that I had lost, I lost 22 kilos through the process, put on 10 kilos in no time just because my mindset wasn't where it needed to be to maintain that unhealthy lifestyle. So through that process, I really learned a lot about, well, how, what is my relationship with my food? Why am I eating that food? And what is it doing to my body? And how is it impacting the way I train and the way I think and feel about myself? So I guess it's really been a process over probably about three or four years that I've worked on myself to go, okay, well, I'm emotionally eating because of this issue in my life. So I need to deal with that issue so then I can break those habits that have created around that emotion to be able to move forward. And through that process, like, you know what? I love feeling strong in my body. So it's not anymore about being skinny, but it's about being fit. It's about being strong. I can lift heavy stuff. I can throw my kids around. I can carry heavy things. Um, and my mind is now really strong. I now can go, oh, I feel this emotion coming on. I used to go to the pantry for that emotion, whereas now I'm going to sit and I'm going to work through it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to be okay with it. And then I'm going to go, okay, well, how am I moving forward through that without using food as a crutch? Understandable. Basically. Understandable. And thank you so much for sharing that. It is quite a powerful transformation because a lot of people are not aware 
of you know what is actually causing them to want to eat more instead of them um you know getting on to uh, having um, a healthy sort of habit or lifestyle, lifestyle. Yeah. yeah a healthy habit or a lifestyle now you also mentioned something um along the lines of relationships with food do you think food and dieting actually plays a pivotal role in the whole makeup of moving from skinny to being strong absolutely um dieting in my opinion is very negative it sets you up for failure from the start if you want to obviously there are there are reasons to lose weight for health reasons and for you know improving the way you feel about yourself but there's also a very healthy way to go about that so even to put into your mind that you're going to diet immediately says to you oh that's deprivation I'm going to miss out. I'm going to feel like the odd one out if I'm in a social situation. I can't go out. So all of a sudden, you've got all this negativity going on around you that then makes you hate yourself even more, but then hate the process even more. So, you know, I like to try and look at it as going, okay, well, let's create some healthy habits around your food. Let's look at the relationship. So it's really about having that guilt-free relationship with food, knowing that food is fueling your body fueling your workout, fueling your day, um, and not just there to make you feel better because you're feeling sad or, you know, you're hungry so you're going to eat three times as much as what you really need to do. It's really about being mindful about what you're eating, when you're eating it, and why you're eating it. Understandable. Now you've even um, opened up a can of worms right there. Hopefully we're not going to be eating those at the end of the show. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you're training your clients, you actually – running educational events with them that actually empower especially busy women and most of our audience happens to be entrepreneurial women that are trying to set up their businesses so that they can be profitable and enjoyable now you help them make healthy nutritional choices amidst through their you know crazy schedules can you just walk us through some of the uh you know stuff that you tell your clients to maybe eat on snack on or you know um, just yeah. do while they're doing their work and being productive absolutely my biggest tip for busy entrepreneurial women running businesses running the home juggling kids family is to really plan and schedule like you'd sit down and work out your marketing plans you'd work out your um, appointments that you've got coming out to really sit at the beginning of the week and look at that schedule what meals can you make ahead of time that's going to help you on those really busy days? Because we all have them. We get home, we've got like half an hour, the kids are screaming at us. You know, if we don't have kids, we've got a meeting coming, another meeting here, another meeting there. Really know your days where you don't have time to cook a proper dinner and have it pre-prepared. Grab it out the freezer, stick it in the fridge. You know, so you just have to reheat it at dinner time. And look at things that are already pre-prepared for you in the supermarket. The supermarket these days are so much better prepared and um, supporting of healthy food, healthy lifestyles, and quick and easy options that fall into that healthy category. And, you know, there are times where you have to have something that may not be a raw salad, and that's okay. Again, it comes down to that guilt, the quantity we eat, and um, the mindset around it. Um, some of the things that I, you know, encourage my clients to snack on perhaps during the day are things like your raw almonds, your raw nuts. Um, protein is a really good source to keep your energy levels high and also to get you through to the next meal. So protein sources are things like chicken, um, eggs, tuna, salmon, cheese, those sorts of things are quick and easy snacks that you can have on the go, have them ready to go in the mornings, pack your meal if you're packing lunches for your family, pack your own lunch, even if you're working from home, because then you don't have to stop for a great length of time. If you're busy, you've got your little lunchbox there, just sit down and eat it, enjoy it, and then get back to your day. You don't have to stop, think, prepare, you've just already got it done. So it's really about being organized being very organized and obviously if if you can't be organized in you know fueling the body that's going to be helping you through to get all the results that you want then you are really destined for failure because if you fail to plan you plan to actually fail now there's one thing that's slowly uh, coming up and it's inevitable it's probably um, one thing that a lot of women despise of and it's a small day um, that comes along and it's called Christmas where a lot of food is going to be eaten and then pretty much after Christmas we are going to have New Year resolutions. 
Now, a yeah. lot of people have their resolutions to want to stay strong or be healthy or, you know, go about their lifestyle and having healthier choices. Is there something that you can maybe help people to start preparing for when they make their resolutions and how to actually stick to them? Because by the time it turns to Valentine's, they're onto the chocolate again. So that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. It's probably about, I think I did some research once about 80% of women particularly will set a weight loss goal as a new year's resolution. So, and you're right by Valentine's, it's got too hard and they just won't do it again. So um, <laughs> I would say I, my advice is to um, be mindful over the Christmas period. Because we usually set these resolutions after we've been partying, we've had lots of functions, lots of family events, lots of food, um, and, you know, really enjoy ourselves, which is great. I mean, that's what Christmas is all about. But be mindful when you're going into these things, you know, be, be prepared. If you've got a big dinner coming up, have a lighter lunch. If you've got, a, you know, lots of cocktail functions, then they eat lightly throughout the day. And then don't arrive at the function starving, so then you don't get home and just eat the pantry because you've had nothing to eat all day. So really just work you know, be prepared again around those events, figure out how you can um, create a strategy that's going to support your goals. Because if you don't feel bad about yourself at New Year's time, you're not going to go, oh, I need to lose 10 kilos. I want to do it by Valentine's Day, but it's such an unrealistic goal. The other thing is if you do find yourself in that situation where you have indulged and you do feel pretty bad about yourself and you do want to lose weight as a New Year's resolution, to set a realistic goal. Okay, it didn't take you, you know, six weeks to get to where you currently are. It takes time. And I know a lot in the fitness industry, everyone bangs on about six week challenges, eight week challenges, 12 week challenges, lose your weight in six weeks, all this sort of stuff. And people think, yeah, quick fix, I've got this. But for me, that's actually setting people up for failure because they focus on that six week goal number if they don't achieve it they're like well i failed so what was the point so really just you know set a realistic time scale for that goal that you've got you know and you know if you need that support that support for someone to help set that goal realistically what is actually realistic in your lifestyle can you change your lifestyle enough to lose that weight um and how committed are you to that goal understandable i i'm even sitting at the edge of my seat right now um, just thinking of what else you're going to be saying. And obviously our audience is probably just sitting there with a bag of popcorn that they've just put to the side. You know why? Because we're talking about health here. But now they really want to maybe get in touch with you. What's the best way that um, people can get a hold of you there, Tina, so that they can actually start thinking um, or moving themselves from thinking of only being skinny to actually being strong? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to help your audience and give them the tips that I know, share my story with them even further and help them to really change that mindset about their end result. Um, Facebook is probably the best. I'm on Facebook. Um, my Facebook is Body Fit Melbourne. Um, you can find me there. Just send me a message through the page or to my website at bodyfitmelbourne.com.au. Um, I've got a contact page there that you can get in touch with me there as well. Certainly would love to um, talk and contact as many of those audience that would love to speak to me. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for opening up that gateway for us there, Tina. And, and um, if you're sitting in the audience right now, you definitely know you've got to do something in order for you to see through the business that you're actually creating right now, because you can't do well if you are not mm -hmm. feeling well. So at the end of the day, do yourself a favor, uh, start working with the professionals. And if you haven't subscribed to this uh, channel, you are missing out on information like this that would actually save not only your health, but your business. And we actually want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Tina, have you got any last words for us, you know, to just stay in mind and be mindful about how we eat, who we um, eat with, and you know, how we actually um, v um, look at our bodies? Yeah, you know, I think you've got to look at, it's very difficult to just change your mindset. It's very difficult to make that switch. And you've got to be, I guess, kind on yourself. It is a process, you know. You need to make um, habits 
have formed over time and they're going to be changed over time. So my biggest tip is to pick one that you can focus on and change that one habit. And once you've nailed that habit, then look at your second one and go, right, I'm going to do this one. Often we'll go in and go, right, I need to change my lifestyle and we will overhaul, become overwhelmed and then we stop doing it and then we just you know, give up and feel like we failed because it's like, well, I try and it didn't work. So just pick one small habit. If snacking after dinner is your worst, then, you know, work on improving that. If, you know, skipping lunch because you're too busy in your business is a habit that you've created, then work on adding a lunch break in somewhere. Even if it's just 15 minutes, these small habits over time are going to become new lifestyles. So, you know, one small habit at a time, work on it, nail it, and then move on to the next. Thank you so much for that. And obviously, if you're listening here, it does take 21 years to actually be 21 years old. So you can't just do one sit up and already start checking for abs. Um, it is a process. It is things that you've got to continuously do. And those little habits that will start formulating in you having a healthier lifestyle will also translate in you being very productive and putting out work that actually would pay you uh, handsomely in the future. Then, Tina, I can't thank you so much for your time. You are very, very welcome. Thank you so much, Prosper. I really hope that the tips I've given tonight really do help your audience to improve their productivity in business and their health um, for a lifestyle of longevity. Thank you so much. You are, thank you. Swear, I could actually sell this on YouTube. <laughs> I could sell this on eBay, and and people will pay me top dollar for this. Don't even oh, ask for a cut. <laughs> hey, as long as I get publicity, I'm all good. I'm good.